Jake Cravo. Uh, Jake is a territory field rep with Culpeper Farmers Co-op, uh, most commonly known now as, as CFC. And uh, have asked, asked Jake to sit in with us today and, and talk about pasture management as he sees it when he goes about his work. So I have a couple questions, and I'm going to throw those out. And if you would, just just let it rip in terms of what your what your thoughts are, okay? Sure. Okay. Uh, from your experience, are there recurring conditions in pasture management that, that lead to pasture problems? Uh, there are some. Uh, there's a wide range, really. Uh, it could be a whole lot of different things. It could be as simple as... Uh, you know, soil test hadn't been done in a long time. We don't know what the pH is, nutrients, uh, content in the soil. Uh, it could be you know, a grazing issue. Uh, and it could be you know, something, a lot of times I see folks get thrown into, either they inherit land or they buy land, and they have no idea yeah. what's been done to it in a long time. So, And a lot of times you can be kind of stabbing at the dark until, until you get some of those things uh, done. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a wide range of things. Given that it's a wide range, um, can you talk to us a little bit about the spectrum of, of pasture management and pasture repair? I guess going from restoration all the way to renovation um, in, in what, you, what you've seen and, and, and how you kind of support that spectrum of what needs to be done and what's consistent with the property owner's goals? Sure, and uh, good you touched on goals. Like I said, there's not any one thing that, that leads to a poor pasture. Uh, there's also not any one particular goal or one solution that fits for everybody. Um, some places you go, it might be, a, you know, the pasture is a brunt, a big brunt of the nutritional diet of the horse. So in that setting, we need, uh, you know, good cool season grasses or, or, or nutrient dense um, stand to feed that horse. Um, it could be a goal where they just want a safe environment for the pleasure animals to be. So no noxious weeds, um, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, or it could be aesthetics. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that have road frontage property and, and, and they want to have a nice appearance uh, either at the entrance or, or what have you to their facility. So, so yeah, yeah, a lot of different goals and a lot of different ways to approach that. Okay. Have you ever run into a, a situation where, let's say, the goal of appearance um, is not consistent with the nutrient goals of the animal? So let's say folks have a couple fat ponies and what looks really good may not be good for the animals. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, that, that, that comes in play, and, and you've got to kind of balance those two things very well. So whether that be uh, maybe restricting the time out on those pads. If you want them nice and lush and green, maybe we've got to do some, some management changes uh, you know, with how long they're out on it or, uh, or uh, uh, some other routes. So, okay. yeah. So there's the idea that lush and green may not be necessary all the time. Not always. Not okay. always. Not always. It all depends, again, on, on what your goal is. So. Very good. All right. Uh, would you be willing to run through a, a couple of scenarios that you've, you've uh, worked with, um, with equine owners in the past, and, and you've helped them address uh, different pasture management needs? Sure. Uh, maybe not so much specific example, but just kind of ideas of different routes you can go. Um, it can be as intensive as uh, we take a soil sample. If, if lime's needed to raise the pH, uh, we do that. If it's you know grain or fertilizers, put those down. We will, um, and maybe even on top of that, some kind of weed weed control as well. It can be as intensive as all those things, you know, on top of each other, or it can be as minimalistic as maybe uh, horses are spending too much time in one area. Maybe we think about rotating a little. Okay. quicker or, or, or something to that effect uh, and uh, you know it could be as simple as put a couple bags of old minic lime on the property raise pH or, okay. or what have you so there's 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 again a wide spectrum of, of very small steps you can take to if it's I need it done I need it looking good next year it can be done more aggressively and, and with that um, there's a lot of wide range of services people in the state provide obviously we provide uh, field services as well as other co-ops and then uh, small independent folks and then it, as a touchstone it could be as simple as buy a small spreader or a small sprayer behind your tractor or ATV and, and if you've got small acreage you can you can knock that out yourself. I suppose there are times when, when having 
having the large equipment and all the capabilities that, that CSC has is not always best for the property owner. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah, we like to you know make sure it works out good for both parties, us as well as the owner. Um, our trucks are kind of geared towards bigger acreage, so okay. if we get in a, a setting where you've got small paddocks, uh, uh, maybe that's something where you're an independent contractor, someone outside of our realm that has small equipment can do, or the if the owner's willing to, to roll the sleeves up, they can certainly take on a lot of that themselves with, with small equipment. Um, so, you know, between us and the extension, we hope we could we could steer them in the right direction. That sounds good to me. All right. Well, Jake, I'd like to say thank you uh, for taking time out of your day sure. uh, to meet with me and to put together this, this film for our, our pasture renovation class this evening. Thank you.